Hey guys, welcome back to Nerd Crave. Today we're going to do another pickups video, so sit back, relax, stay tuned, maybe pour a beverage. I've got a nice cold Coca-Cola here in my Link's Awakening cup. These cups are actually pretty cool. They were exclusive to 7-Eleven in Canada. There's uh, three different designs of them. I've got all three. In fact, I've got about five or six sets of all three. Ah, good to the last drop. Okay guys, thanks for sticking around. So as I said, today we're going to be talking about Wii and Wii U games. I've got 18 games here to show you. So the first game I want to show you, it's a Wii game. It's Tales of Symphonia Dawn of the New World. This is a sequel to the GameCube game. This game was also available, and I in fact I have it on PS3 as well. But it's a little bit different on the Wii than the PS3 version. The PS3 version came in a combo pack with the first and second game. I really like the Tales games. Uh, I have... Quite a few of them. I'm trying to go for a complete set of all of the Tales of games, uh, which is why I bought this second version, just to go for a complete set. Uh, Tales games are pretty straight up uh, action RPG games. Um, I think my favorite of the series is Tales of Zillia. I'm working through that one right now, and it's uh, really a charming game. Uh, really well ba balanced difficulty. The Tales of series has been around for a long time. I've got games on the PS1, the PS2, and the Wii, and my PS3, and I've actually got one on my 360. Um, I'm trying to go, as I say, for a complete set, so this is one more along that journey. The next game I have to show you is a rather hard-to-find Wii U game. Now, this game is an indie game, and it was released towards the end of the life cycle of the Wii U, so it's a little harder to get. It was a pretty low print run, and as you can see here, I have SteamWorld Collection, which includes SteamWorld Heist and SteamWorld Dig. In a broken world, danger does not wait its turn. Join Rogue Captain Piper Faraday and face the challenges of the vast frontier. With free aiming instead of dice rolls, your skill makes all the difference. In his search for answers, he dug up more than he bargained for. The digging. The caves. Gold. Uh, this game, as you can see on the sticker here, uh, it was priced at $68.99. It was actually priced higher than that, uh, but I managed to get them down even lower than the sticker price. But this is a pretty hard, hard to find and expensive game, at least around here. This is the kind of game I really like to play because I can pick it up and play it for 15 minutes or 30 minutes or an hour and put it down and carry on with my day. A lot of games, my I absolutely love JRPGs, but at the 50 to 60 to 100 hour commitment, I only have time for three or four of those in any given year. So something like SteamWorld Heist or SteamWorld Dig, you can play 15 minutes, an hour, like I say, and just have a great time, and you don't need to worry about picking up where you left off or anything. Uh, really fun, just quick, simple games. The next game I want to show you, uh, nothing particularly special except for one thing. This is Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games, Vancouver 2010. Now, being up in Canada, we don't see an awful lot of video games with Canadian content, and this does have some Canadian branding. Now, the Mario and Sonic games are basically just collections of mini games. If you played Wii Sports, you basically know your way around this game. Uh, you know, there's a variety of sports to choose from, from, you know, snowboarding and skiing and, you know, things of that nature. I also have the Summer Olympics game for the Wii as well, but I bought this one primarily because it was the Canadian Olympics, and, uh, you know, I'm a sucker for anything Canadian proud. 
Next game I want to show you, I don't know a whole lot about. Uh, it's Battalion Wars 2. Uh, I have played Advance Wars, although these are not Advance Wars. They're not directly related to Advance Wars, but there are some similarities. Uh, I pl played the first game, Battalion Wars, on the GameCube, and I did like it. It's a, you know, strategic tactical game where, you know, there's action elements, but then you're telling your different... Uh, units what you want them to do and sending them out into the battle uh, pretty fun game it's another one of those games where you can play it for an hour and put it down sort of play around or whatever uh, so I do like playing games like that because I just don't have a whole lot of time to get into these bigger longer games and that brings me to the next game which I'm kind of excited about uh, this is a Dragon Quest side game Dragon Quest Swords for the Wii and this is a JRPG, but it's completely in first person, which is really interesting, I gotta say, actually. I've never seen a first person JRPG before, but this game is kind of dumbed down a little bit. It's simple and it's short. It's got all the classic gameplay of Dragon Quest. It's got a pretty, pretty standard story. Uh, you know, young boy becomes a hero, has to save the world. Uh, you're doing all your classic things like sword fighting and attacking slimes and all that sort of thing, just like in the Dragon Quest universe. But it's just, it's simplified. Now, does it have motion controls? Yes. Just about everything on the Wii has motion controls. But, in this game, it's it's pretty light. It's, the, it's done pretty well. Uh, you don't have to wave your arms around like an idiot. It's, you know, it's it's pretty simple to just give it a little shake here and there, and that's about all you have to do. Is it a great Dragon Quest game? No. But is it Dragon Quest? Absolutely. So moving on to the next game, I have another Wii U game here. This is another indie game and a slightly harder to find game, although I did come across it fairly easily on Amazon. This is one of the only games in this stack that I paid a uh, brand new price for and got brand new. I got it on Amazon for about $23.99, I believe it was, and that is Gianna Sisters Twisted Dreams Director's Cut. This game is really original. Uh, it's got a really interesting gameplay on it. It is a platformer, uh, a 2D platformer, but you have this mechanic where you're switching back and forth between the dreamland and reality, uh, kind of a nightmare world and a cutesy world. You've got these kind of, uh, I don't know if it's, I guess it's two different sisters, the Giano sisters, they switch back and forth. But what that mechanic allows you to do is, I don't know if you've ever played Titanfall, where you had the Titanfall 2, where you have the time travel mechanic, and you get to a certain point in the left level where you had to shift time in order to get through. Well, it's kind of the same thing here with switching dimensions between the dream worlds, where as you're platforming, you come to an obstacle that maybe you can't, you know, a chasm that's too far to jump across or a wall that you can't get over, and you switch over to uh, the other dream world, and it allows you to get through. It's a really interesting game. It's really well done. And again, being a low print run game late in the life cycle of the Wii U, it is fairly hard to get or at least it was, until I found a few copies on Amazon. If you can find it, definitely pick it up. It is available on the Switch as well, uh, although I don't have a Switch, so I prefer to play mo most of these games on the Wii U. Alright, so the next game here, this is a little bit of an older game on the Wii. This is a roguelike RPG, Baroque. Now, the reason I picked this up initially is because it's an Atlas title. I had not heard of this game uh, when I found it, but being that it has Atlas on the cover, I bought it anyway because it was a pretty good price. I think I paid about $10 for it. I'm going for a complete Atlas collection at some point. That's one of my major goals. Now, obviously there's some very expensive games in that list, so I'm starting on the Wii and the PS2. I'm trying to complete all the Atlas games on the Wii and the PS2. So you're going to see a couple Atlas games in the, in the pickups today. Baroque, as I say, it's, a, uh, it's an interesting game where it's really like world like you know, if, you, if you die, you're dead. And you gotta start all over. And the entire thing pretty much happens if you pass over the, world, the levels. Can make it like a dungeon crawler uh, RPG. Pretty interesting game. Graphics are really good for the Wii. So, moving on to another game here. 
This game I bought for nostalgia. I had been looking for this game for a while. It is a slightly harder to find game on the Wii. Uh, not impossible. It's not super expensive. Uh, and that is Metal Slug Anthology. Now, if you are around uh, back in the 90s for Neo Geo cabinets and the arcades, you're going to remember this game fondly. This collection includes Metal Slug 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and Metal Slug X. It's a great value. I think I paid about $20 for this game, and it's well worth every penny. To be able to go back and revisit some of these games, you know, run and gun games, fantastic graphics for the era. You just can't beat it. Uh, there is also a version of this on the PS2. I think the Wii version is better thanks to some modified control schemes. Definitely worth a pickup. Next game I've got here, I've got a heck of a deal on it. It's another Atlas game. Uh, it's Trauma Center New Blood. I now have two Trauma Center games for the Wii. I understand there's one more I'm still looking for. Uh, I bought this primarily because it's an Atlas game, but I was also interested in the gameplay of the Trauma Center games. They are really unique in the fact that it's basically a surgery simulator, uh, you know, with an RPG storyline. So, you know, I got a heck of a good deal on it. I paid less than eight bucks for it, so I definitely thought I would pick it up. You know, the term hidden gem gets thrown around an awful lot. Uh, I don't know whether you can call a Nintendo first-party game a hidden gem or not, but not a lot of people know about this game, and certainly not a lot of people have played this game, and that is Wario Land Shake It. And I think the name, Shake It, gave people the impression that this was a, a, you know, a motion control waggle sort of a game. And yes, there are some motion controls in it, there is a little bit of shaking, but this is not like a lot of other uh, Wii motion control games. This is a fantastic 2D platform. Uh, the completionist, I was watching his video on this game, he says it's one of the best platformers he's ever played. And from the standpoint of, you know, a completionist, this has so many extra missions and modes and things like that in the game that really enhance the experience of trying to complete the game. The graphics are fantastic, the character and charm of the game is, uh, you know, just second to none. I've only played about two hours of the game, but I'm absolutely in love with this game. I had no idea. I mean, I have a couple of Wario games. I have Wario Land uh, for the GameCube, which is more of a 3D game. Uh, this one is 2D. It's kind of got a cel-shaded sort of a look to it, but it's absolutely gorgeous, and the platforming is extremely good. The controls are very tight. I couldn't ask for a better game. It really is, uh, I would say, uh, one of the best 2D platformers I've ever played. Next game I want to show you is Zack and Wiki Quest for Barbaro's Treasure. This is an interesting game that has appeared on several Hidden Gems videos that I've seen, from Metal Jesus to, you know, several other people around the internet. When you're looking for a Hidden Gem on the Wii, this is one of them. Now, this is a Capcom game. It's a point-and-click adventure. If you've ever played point-and-click adventures back in the day on the PCs back in the 90s, you'll feel right at home with this game. Uh, you know, you move around, obviously, by pointing and clicking, but it's essentially a puzzle game. The puzzles are quite challenging and a lot of fun. There's about 20 levels, I believe, in the game, um, and it's, uh, you know, it doesn't disappoint. The graphics are fantastic, uh, and it's, it's just, you know, it's a lot of fun. It's something you don't really find on the Wii every day. Uh, the worst thing about the game is the name, and I think that's why the game is a hidden gem, because people read it and they say, what the hell's a Zack and Wiki? It doesn't really say anything about the gameplay, that it's, uh, you know, a puzzle game or anything like that. You're looking for treasure, obviously, you're kind of a pirate, but, uh, yeah, one heck of a game. Moving on to the next game, I guess we've got about six or seven games left here. Uh, next game I've heard a lot of good things about, and that is Kirby's Epic Yarn. Played it just a little bit. Uh, it's pretty charming to look at. It's pretty classic Kirby. The only I've never really gotten into Kirby. Now, the only other game that I own in the Kirby franchise is right Kirby's Return to Dreamland on the Game Boy Advance, which is a fantastic game, by the way. But uh, Kirby's Epic Yard doesn't disappoint. I didn't pay very much for it. I think I got it at Value Village for about $3.99. I don't see a sticker on here, so I'm not 100% sure on that. But, uh, you know, heck of a game. Glad to add it to my collection. I do 
eventually want to have all of the first party games on the Wii and the Wii U. So that's one more game off the list. Speaking of first party Nintendo games, this one's actually kind of interesting because it's more of a second party game. It's a collaboration between Nintendo and Square Enix called Fortune Street. This game was a late release uh, on the Wii. Because this game was a late release on the Wii, it didn't get a lot of attention, and being that it's essentially a board game, a lot of people really didn't pick this game up, and that's kind of sad, actually, because this is really the best board game that you could play on the Wii. Uh, it is a collaboration, as I said, between Square Enix and Nintendo. That means that you are playing with not only Nintendo characters, but Dragon Quest characters which makes it pretty interesting. The dialogue, there's a bit of a story going on in the background, although it's pretty minimal. The game is essentially a Monopoly-style game where you buy and hold properties and rent them out. There's a stock market sort of a mechanic to it that makes things prices rise and fall throughout the game. And it also creates a, you know, instead of just going around and around the board, it creates more of a strategy for kind of which direction you want to go. So, you know, it's kind of got some elements of Monopoly, and it's got some elements of Mario Party, but it doesn't have any mini-games, which is kind of refreshing, to be honest. This next game I was looking for because I had to pack up my CRT when I moved into this new space, and I don't have any way to play light gun games at the moment. Uh, I love light gun games. I, again, I like to be able to pick up a game for even 15 or 20 min minutes in that arcade style, and to be able to play a light gun game sometimes and kind of vent off some steam, that's a lot of fun. So I went out and got myself House of the Dead 2 and 3 Return, which is a really fun game that you can just, as I, I say, pop die. in and play for 15 minutes, or you can play through the story in an hour or two. Um, but the Wii Remote works really well with this game, better than you would think. Uh, in terms of using using the Wii remote. It is compatible with the zapper attachment, although I don't really like those. I just like using the pointer, uh, kind of, you know, au natural, so to speak. Uh, I've not played all the way through it yet, but it is quite a lot of fun and really takes me back. It's one of those nostalgia games that, uh, you know, I played back in the day in the arcades, and uh, it's pretty true to that experience. Speaking of nostalgia, one of the first systems I had as a, you know, pre-teen was the TurboGrafx-16, and I had Bo Bomberman 90... 94, I believe it was. Bomberman 94. Now, I picked this up, Bomberman Land, on the Wii, and this is not a traditional Bomberman game, but it's still a lot of fun. It is a collection of minigames in the Bomberman universe, but it's actually well done. The minigames are fun, especially if you've got several people, and, uh, you know, you can have a pretty good time with this game. I picked this up for, I think, five dollars, and, uh, you know, as it goes, for nostalgia's sake, I'm glad to put it in my collection. Down to the last couple of games here. This one's on the Wii U. I picked up Shantae Half-Genie Hero. Uh, this game is way better than it has any right to be. The Shantae series started back on the Game Boy, I believe. And uh, I've been aware of it for years, but this is actually the first Shantae game that I ever played. And i got to say, I was actually shocked at how good this game is. Now, this is an another one of the harder-to-get games on the Wii. A little bit more expensive on the Wii U. It's a little bit more expensive, but uh, definitely worth it if you can pick this up. Now, I believe this is also available on the Switch. Don't quote me on that. But any way you can get your hands on this game, by all means, go ahead and do it. The platforming is really tight. The controls are tight. The story is cute. Uh, the bosses are difficult. I can't recommend this game highly enough. Now, for my last couple of games here, some of you may remember Operation Rainfall. Operation Rainfall was a fan campaign to get some Japanese games uh, translated to English and released in North America. Uh, towards the end of the Wii Wii's life cycle, there were some fantastic games released in Japan that were just not supposed to be coming to North America. So fans got together by the thousands and campaign to get three games brought to North America. Those three games were The Last Story, which I have, and now the, these two games that I'm about to show you complete that mini collection. 
Uh, so I now have all three Operation Rainfall games. And those two games are Pandora's Tower and Xenoblade Chronicles. Both of these games have traditionally been pretty expensive games on the Wii. Uh, recently, the prices have started to come down, especially on Xenoblade Chronicles. Xenoblade Chronicles, a year ago, was you know, an $80 to $90 game, at least in Canadian currency. I was able to pick this up for less than a third of that price just yesterday. Pandora's Tower is an absolutely gorgeous looking game. So Pandora's Tower is an interesting game. It's, it's technically a little bit different from your average JRPG because it has platforming elements and uh, puzzle solving elements, environmental puzzles and that sort of thing. It's got a really kind of weird creepy dark story too where uh, uh, the protagonist, the main protagonist's uh, girlfriend has like a disease or a curse rather where she's literally rotting away and uh, the only way that he can stop her from dying from the curse is to go out and kill monsters and then bring back the monster flesh for her to eat which is I know it's kind of disgusting but uh, like I said it's a little dark. The Xenoblade Chronicles this is a really big really important game on the Wii. Its importance really can't be overstated on the Wii. It is by far the biggest, most ambitious game you can possibly get on the Wii. Uh, it's as close as you can get to a huge open world experience, although it's it's not really truly open world, but the different areas of the game are so huge that it really gives you the impression that it's open world. This game has a long history. It's a spiritual kind of sequel continuation of the Xeno Saga series, which in itself is a spiritual continuation of Xeno Gears. Uh, the whole kind of Xeno concept has been going on since the since the PS1. I am trying to go for a complete Xeno collection. I do have Xeno Gears and all three Xeno Saga games. I also have uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X on the Wii U. So now with this, I really am only missing Xenoblade Chronicles 2 on the Switch, and I've pretty much got them all. But this is an absolutely beautiful game that if you're looking for a really premium, top-notch experience on the Wii, you don't need to look any further than Xenoblade Chronicles. It's it's just it's the best. I'm so glad that Operation Rainfall brought this in because it's really the best experience you can have in terms of an action JRPG on this platform. Alright guys, that's it for this episode. I was able to show you 18 games that I recently picked up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please give me a thumbs up and uh, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already because I will be putting up at least two videos a week, if not more. Um, I've got a lot more things to show you and a lot more things to talk about, so please stick around. Please like, please subscribe, and you know what? If you could leave a comment and tell me which of these games are your favorite, or which Wii games are your favorite on the system that were not mentioned here, because I'm always looking for Wii hidden gems and not-so-hidden gems. You know, there's some games like Wario Land uh, that are not really hidden, but people just haven't played them. And uh, I'd be curious to see what uh, your favorite games are for the Wii and the Wii U, and let me know what I've missed out on. Thank you very much, guys. Have a great day.